to uh, Liam Lynch, who's the chief security strategist at eBay, founding member, has been with us since uh, day zero uh, with Cloud Security Alliance, has been very influential in a lot of our work. So you could sort of think of him as a more grown up uh, Chris Hoff, kind of, in terms of skills. So. I, I wouldn't say that necessarily, <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, so welcome to um, Still Morning. These lights are driving me crazy. I can't see the audience, but this uh, panel has no deck. Um, the other things, just some housekeeping, there, you see microphones in the aisles. We want you to participate in this panel. Um, I'm going to have the panel introduce themselves, where they're coming from, what they expect to see in the future of cloud computing security. Uh, I may in, in interject uh, the odd question, but I would rather that you, uh, the participants uh, ask your own questions, and if we want to debate, we can debate, and if there's contention, there's contention, and that's all good stuff. So um, on my perspective, quickly, uh, as a security strategist at eBay, I'm looking where the business is going, uh, business in the cloud, and you know, what do we need to be able to get the company there, our customers there, our vendors, our partners, uh, how do we all cooperate, interoperate, orchestrate, uh, different things. Um, we've heard a lot today about you know everything from business uh, uh, intelligence all the way to identity and access management. So we want to fill in some of those gaps at what we see as a panel for the future. So to my left, go ahead. I'm Dave Asprey, VP of Cloud Security with Trend Micro. Joined the company about two months ago because I've been in the cloud for since we first called it cloud, and even before that, going back to the days of Exodus Communications. And I think that security in the cloud is one of the biggest, most important areas for the next probably five years as this all evolves. I spend time in the content distribution business as well. And I have a particular interest as we look to the future of cloud and the future of cloud security, what happens when the cloud starts leaving the data center? You start managing hundreds of millions of devices as if they are a distributed ambient cloud. And we're starting to think about that sort of thing at Trend Micro today to be prepared. But in the shorter term, we're very interested in things like encryption and key management. Patrick? Great. Um, good morning, or good afternoon. My name is Patrick Harding. I'm the CTO at uh, Ping Identity. Uh, that's identity, not security. So uh, everything you've been hearing this morning around identity management and access management and single sign-on as it relates to uh, the cloud are the problems uh, we help our customers solve. So um, you know, from a future standpoint today, I'm hoping we can start to talk about some of the gaps that are existing in that area, because there are still a bunch. You, you heard it from uh, the uh, gentleman from Intel a, a few minutes ago. So um, we'll be talking through some of the ways we think we can sort of resolve some of those things. Do you want our, our five minutes now, or do you want our? Uh, do it now. All right, good. I'm Eddie Schwartz from uh, NetWitness, Chief Security Officer. Uh, I, hearing a lot of the sessions earlier, I, I mean, it's funny because it's, I, it, I was watching people walk out of here and I see a lot of blank looks on everybody's face. And I'm trying to figure out it's, if it's because they weren't enlightened on the way out or maybe they, you know, it's like the absorbing too much thing. You know, it's this whole cloud is different thing, but then everything I hear sort of is like a rehash of a lot of things that we've heard over time. Uh, you know, for example, uh, you need to audit the cloud, you need to worry about email threats, you need to worry about all of these other things. And it's sort of striking to me. Uh, I was on a panel recently with a bunch of people from the federal government, and they were talking about FedRAMP. And I, I looked at the requirements, and it was sort of like taking the 800 standards and then taking a column and sort of saying, okay, all the cloud providers are now responsible for this. And that's sort of the definition of, of compliance in the cloud. I think as we look at some of this stuff, we really need to stop talking about, gee, there's all these problems, gee, there's all these problems, and, and about the hows, and really need to revisit things like how we think about the security stack in general. Because uh, the way we've been doing things, we know, is fundamentally broken in network security, for example. That's my area of focus. And uh, the bad guys are winning. Uh, that's constantly being proven to us. So how do we do it differently in the cloud versus saying all of us vendors uh, simply have cloud offerings and it's the same junk that we've been offering, uh, you know, in the non-cloud environments. Uh, compliance, you know, instead of simply pushing things 
to the vendors of cloud environments and saying, where's your SaaS 70 and will you be responsible for these 20 items because I don't own them anymore? Uh, you know, how do we think more towards this notion of continuous monitoring and sort of force that issue relative to critical controls and find innovative ways to do things like compliance as a service? Uh, I think that you've got to know everything that's happening in that environment and that requires a broader use of community. Right now, communities are sort of these silos of intelligence. I mean, think of all of you and the brain power that we have, and yet we don't really collaborate very well. You know, there's silos of people doing things like botnet and file integrity and, you know, what Trend does and what everybody does. And imagine the power of bringing that together in a cloud-based security intelligence uh, type of environment that's more open and, uh, you know, had more access to attaching security principles and security metadata to common data objects. Uh, so, you know, my thing is that a revolution is required here. We need to stop thinking about how to apply all of these ridiculous processes that we have out there and think about how we have a revolution relative to uh, cloud security. Um, so, Scott Chasen, I'm the uh, CTO of McAfee's uh, content and cloud business. Um, so, I agree with most of what the panel have said today, although I don't think identity is going to be that big of a deal. Just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, we look at things... Get in line, Scott. <laughs> we, uh, we, you know, we look at how can we extend the enterprise policy into the cloud, right? And how do we do all those things as a service? And, you know, uh, whether it's transparency as a service or encryption as a service, you know, it's key to follow the data, right? The data is moving into the cloud. How are we going to secure the assets around the data? How are we going to secure the data itself? Um, you know, when you look at what's going to happen over the next 10 years, you're talking about a digital universe of 35 zettabytes, right? Uh, half of that is going to be stored inside of the cloud. You know, it's going to move through the cloud as well. So we really need to focus on following the data. Um, really be, uh, you know, have a mindset about how can we build a bridge, you know, from the enterprise into the cloud and then back from the cloud to the enterprise. And that's really, you know, at McAfee, we're really focused on not only, you know, identifying the latest, you know, attacks in, in, in malware that, that obviously are pop, uh, propagating through the, the normal channels of email and web today, but how do we, you know, enable, um, you know, the, the security layer between the enterprise and the cloud. And when you throw in identity and you throw in mobile um, and all the other um, yet to be developed or invented technologies around collaboration or transactional um, opportunities, you, you really find yourself scratching your head. I mean, it's a big challenge. I agree the frameworks are going to be really interesting and we're going to see a lot, I think, this year. Uh, the Security as a Service Working Group, I'm very excited about that because I think it's going to, to really define a lot of you know, not only what we're trying to do, but as an industry, how we're going to be able to come together and deliver some of these key uh, technologies. So transparency, assurance, identity, encryption, follow the data. Okay, so we have a lot of questions. <laughs> I would have preferred the questions came from the audience as opposed from the panel, but uh, sorry. Uh, so now let's try to concentrate on one of the sets of questions. So I don't want to start with identity because that's the obvious one, but if the audience would prefer that we delve into identity and the cloud and orchestration interoperability. Uh, we can start there. Does anybody in uh, the audience have a question to start with? Yes, please. Uh, there's a, a microphone right behind you. Okay, this is one ball mall of Dolly. Uh, so in, uh, the, the panelists uh, indeed discussed many interesting uh, Things in the morning we heard a lot. Um, indeed, one of them uh, emphasized many things are the similar in the IT security, in the enterprise IT security. Or, uh, uh, but in general, I would say really uh, the difference in the cloud m might be. We heard some of them indeed, visibility or trust. And probably trust is the one thing. Trust needs visibility. Visibility of something like uh, immune of insider attack. So I think this emphasis on the visibility, especially on the verifiability of free of insider attacks, could be uh, something quite new or different, if we say. If we really look, want to look at What's the difference 
from the usual conventional enterprise IP. <clears throat> so, so indeed, we really want to focus on this thing. It, it is usually, I don't think it's encryption, key management. These are necessary, but these are insufficient. I think it's uh, trust, visibility, insider attacks. I hope these are discussed more. So I, I have a comment on that. Um, so Forrester released a paper uh, last few months. It was their zero trust model. And they're evolving several chapters of that paper. And part of that paper discusses the need for within security architectures to develop a uh, zero trust layer that involves uh, more network uh, analysis and visibility. And it also addresses issues like identity management and uh, the notion of changing the trust model uh, to one that's uh, trust but verify to uh, basically don't trust and always verify. Uh, you know, you can believe what you want about that kind of stuff. But I do think that what you're describing in terms of increased visibility and having the ability to uh, start with the notion of total visibility into lots of different aspects of the security question and then being able to pinpoint aspects of it uh, whether it's you know the things that Scott mentioned or identity types of issues uh, are very important uh, in terms of dealing with emerging threats, uh, especially zero day and you know different malware types of issues. One of the things that we've learned about trust is that certainly you need to be able to trust an identity, but you also need to know whether a device is trusted or trustable. So one of the things that we zoomed in on uh, in one of our early products called Secure Cloud is the ability to say, is this virtual machine image actually something that should be allowed to access an encrypted volume? So before our key management service will allow the key to be used, even after the proper credentials have been requested for the key, we verify what processes are running, what OS, what apps, what, what patch level, and we build it in actually at the key management layer. And so that way we can say before in the past, you'd, you'd say, in the enterprise, you can probably be sure that when a server in your own data center in a secure environment requests access to backend storage, that you have a certain degree of, of assuredness. When you put it in the public cloud running on EC2, you feel no safety whatsoever there, but you can add that back in by verifying that trust model. We see that happening in the future across just about every layer. So it comes down, do you have credentials? Yeah, but do you look right? Do you smell right? Do you have the right fingerprints? It, it's not just one thing that identifies that trust. And it's going to take time, right? I mean, um, somebody told me that uh, uh, trust was the business word for love, right? And so, you know, when you think about that, it's hard to write a standard for love. Um, so, you know, it's going to take a while, and not one company is going to do this, right? I mean, it, this is... You know, how do you, how do you get down to, to relationship mapping? You know, the, the, the problem of actually defining what the relationships are is daunting enough. But mapping, you know, relationships to trust. I mean, we're starting to do this. We're doing it with malware detection, right? We're moving from reactionary signatures to proactive uh, uh, models of detecting the threat horizon and managing the threat horizon. But, you know, in the longer term view, when you look at trust as a service, this is a 10-year you know, a, a effort, I think, that's in front of us. It's going to be a big challenge, but one uh, that is extremely worthy to pursue. I hate the word trust. It's awful. I mean, really, what, what does it actually mean? Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's totally intangible for most people to get their heads around what you're actually talking about. Um, it, it, it really, in my mind, speaks to reputation. And in reputation in sort of the enterprise world, the cloud world, it really speaks then to things like accreditation and attestation um, based on um, you know, conformance to certain guidelines. Uh, in the identity space, there's some stuff happening actually with Vivek Kundra driving it uh, from the government around trust framework providers, uh, awful name I know, that um, want to start to help people understand and standardize how identities can be vetted and verified to begin with, then how can they be authenticated, and then how those identities can be made portable to, you know, to, so that they can be given access to a myriad of different applications. Um, it's a really hard problem to solve. Um, it's a multi-year effort to get there, as they were saying. So, uh, but it, it, it's moving in that direction. 